Welcome back everybody to another wondrous day in the woods. Now myself and Isaac here are cruising around on our XC bikes and between us we've got a fair bit of experience with Isaac here even dabbling in World Cups. That's right Rich, so we're out here today to show you some tips on how to get faster on your XC bike. Woo! This first one we're going to kick off with is free speed, isn't it, Isaac? It's, well, sadly not quite free. Uh, sadly, nothing is ever free, but in terms of bike setup, thinking about your stem position and your tyres are two things I think really important on a cross country bike. Yeah. Help you carry that speed, and also, particularly with the stem, what I mean is having a really negative downward stem, yes. which can look pretty intimidating, can't it, Rich? Oh, 100%, yeah. I mean, you'll see a lot of World Cup riders there with these stems that are actually almost, they're dropping their bars below the the head tube there and it looks yeah. horrendous but we've got to remember that these guys have been riding their bikes like that over a long period of time isn't it and you, you do adapt to it. it yeah i dropped my stem and i thought this is a little bit weird on the sense but yeah. i really noticed the benefit of why you do it is a lot of the time especially on the steepest climbs you're riding but anytime you're going uphill if you're a little bit more lent over it does mean your hips are a little bit more opened up and it's sort of more natural pedaling position more blood flowing to your legs and uh, it's just a lot more efficient yeah, true. So what I'd recommend, and I'm sure you'll agree here, is start small, increments, isn't it? So yeah. incrementally drop that stem if you can. I mean, you'll see mine here on, on these bikes is absolutely slammed. There's no spacer under this. However, I've been riding, well, we've both been riding XC bikes for a very long time. But what you can do is slowly remove maybe a five mil spacer at a time over however long you feel comfortable, just to slowly drop that down. Basically, I wouldn't cut your steerage tube off until you're confirmed <laughs> yeah, and happy a... with the height of it, because there's no, no reattaching that carbon. That is a commitment, isn't it? Yeah. Right, so when it comes to tyres, this is yeah. where we're talking about free speed. Like we said, you're gonna, maybe a bit of a cost involved, but yeah. let's talk tyres, Isaac. Tyres, interesting thing, because I think it's, it's, a lot of it's personal, right? We True. all could have liked to ride bikes differently. We're gonna get more out of different tread patterns and tyres, depending on how we ride, but, for XC, especially in racing, you do see people choosing stuff that's as fast rolling as possible. At the top level, it can get a little bit extreme. You've, you're riding these insanely technical tracks out in the Alps. Yes, yeah. On a tire that would be best placed on, you'd think, on a bike path, and I've been a bit <laughs> blown away by it. But you really notice, the, especially with an XC bike, where you, you can't demand too much of the bike, you have to ride light and carefully and sort of flowing. Having a tire that rolls really quickly does help with that because I found you can't use a really aggressive tyre to its full potential anyway. You know, yeah. like with the brakes, the suspension, it's all supposed the bike to be limits it, doesn't it? light and fast. Yeah. So if you've got a tyre that helps you save energy on the climbs, you're going to go faster. The main thing that I've learned over the last few years racing cross country is, is sort of how to make the bike work for you and where to attack the trail and where to save energy. What I mean by that is identifying the kind of rest points in the trail and the points that you can attack and then make a big difference to your overall speed. So a lot of descents and stuff like that. You're not gonna be able to attack them on an XC bike like you would on a more aggressive bike. So just taking that time to chill, rest, take a few deep breaths, maybe shake your legs out. And then when it comes to a pinch point, a climb, or an extra technical bit, you've got the, the energy and the sort of, the lactic acid's been dissipated in your legs, you know, you can attack it. And that sounds quite sort of racy and sciencey, but actually I find it's really, really useful when I'm just out riding on an XC bike. A lot of the stuff translates across. Did you see that from Isaac? Right, basically what he's done there is what I wanted to talk about next and it's using the trail to get free speed, to generate momentum. So what he did there was using the features, the berm, the roller, to pump and manual over to make the bike go quicker without having to use more than necessary energy. So he's not stopping, starting, sprinting, slowing down. And he's actually getting faster for, for almost nothing again. 
Okay, so it's not just using berms and rollers and smooth features like that to generate speed. It's thinking when in a trail you can actually take a break and use it to generate speed as well. So there might be sections where it's quite rough and rocky and rooty, and you could maybe back off and skip over the top or even bunny hop and jump rather than slowing down, banging your way through, and then having to get on the gas again to sprint, like what Isaac was saying earlier. Yo. Yo. <laughs> <laughs> all right, mate. Hey, man, you right? I just wondering, can I follow your lines for this bit? Of course I, you I can. I don't know the breaking points. It'd be really good to be on the wheel. Mate, hop aboard the pain train. Choo choo! How was that, mate? Oh, cheers for that. It's really, really good. Ah, no mate. worries. I think it's actually a, a great tip, though, isn't it? Following other riders, potentially faster riders, to kind of see where they go and what they do, especially on a cross-country bike. You yeah, know what I mean? like both sort of literally on a trail and just being exposed to faster riders in the sport as a whole, or if you're out in the woods or at a race, just sort of seeing how people do stuff, how they execute their riding, where they're pressing on, and literally just where Rich is braking on the trail is super helpful. Yeah, I agree. I think uh, especially if you're new to cross country, right? So if you're new to riding an XC bike, it can feel very alien. Uh, the type yeah. of bike, the travel, the tires, just the whole combination. So if you go out riding with a load of XC buddies who've maybe been doing it a lot longer, you actually sort of realize the true potential that that bike might have. Is that an Isaac I hear? I think it, it was. <laughs> right, we're up to our final top tip to get you faster on your XC bike. And actually, this one's a little bit racing orientated, isn't it? It's a little bit, a little bit mental, this one. Yeah, I, I, mental game is yeah. so important in racing, but yes. any bike riding, sometimes it's quite hard, I guess is what we're saying. And yeah. obviously racing brings that out, but just when you're out on a ride, I don't love suffering up hills, no you know? One does. But you have to turn that around into it being, it's, it's every every hill you ride up is like makes the next one easier kind of thing. Exactly, yeah. So I think basically, XC is not fun until you've done, fin like you're finished, and then XC is fun, right? Yeah. From a it, racing it's perspective. From, a, from, a, from some perspective, <laughs> yeah. almost like it, I don't want to say it's completely unfun at the time. No, it's tight but too, just, isn't it? It's, if you are finding it hard, that's all right, because yeah. it is. Yeah, yeah, you know? 100%. And I get that in a race sometimes if I'm being beaten, and yeah. that's hard to take you sometimes, you know, yeah. and you think, oh, I, just got, I can't do this, I want to stop, oh, they've dropped yeah. me again, and it's like, well, that's just how it, that's what it is, and you it's know, not and like, that's fine. Yeah, like. it's at, like if a course is tough as well, right? So if, you're, if it's got a horrendous climb in it, or, I don't know, you're a bit nervous on a sketchy descent, and you're just finding it a bit tough, but... That, you know, that is what it is. Yeah. So I suppose our, our top tip here is to just remain positive, kind of know that it is going to be a challenge, Exa XC. Exactly, exactly. XC is going to be a challenge, like, yeah. let's face it. But perseverance, you know, sort of grin and bear it, <laughs> yeah. and you will, you will enjoy it and you'll, you'll get faster. Right? Yeah. Yeah, cool. All right, well, look. Before it hammers it down even more, because there is some thunder in the air, we are yeah, out of here. Yeah, look, thank you very much for watching, everyone. It's been an absolute pleasure. But me and Isaac, we're out of it. We're going for an XC ride. So until next time, see you, guys. See you later.